This should by and large be review of CISS 216. Do we have any questions on this? All right. We're now going to look at a version of this that I posted today, the graceful degradation version, which the desktop version looks identical. The desktop version works exactly the same. But the mobile version looks a little different. So let's go and open up this. Do you remember how bad the mobile looked previously? Now, the mobile looks a little bit better. For one thing, if you remember before, the pre-graceful degradation one, um, it, it didn't look any different than the full version. It was um, two columns or three columns and, and it was really hard to read. Here at least we can read it. And as we scroll through, we'll notice effectively we've taken was the three column and put it in a one column format. You notice anything else? No picture. No picture. All right, nothing up my sleeve, but the picture disappeared. Okay, let's take a look at that. And really, in essence, let me close. I did. To the HTML, I added two things. And then there's an additional CSS file. This, I'm sort of hard pressed to explain to you the details of everything it does, but in a nutshell, this will make your page look a lot more viewable when viewed at a mobile device. It sets sort of an, an uh, initial uh, size for the page so that you, your, your mobile browser doesn't try to resize to fit everything in. So this allows it to be legible. Um, when you view it on a mobile browser. So that meta tag, again, that will be something that you'll copy on all your pages because if it's viewed on a mobile device, you want it to do that. Now the other thing here is, if you notice, we have a second style sheet. And it's called mobile.css. And it's after our responsive style sheet. Remember that it's possible to have two style sheets on a web page. And if we have two style sheets per web page, then whatever style rules are in the second one supersede the style rules that are in the first one. So these are deliberately in this order. So the browser will first apply the responsive style sheet, which is sort of the baseline, which is the full version style sheet, in other words, and then it will apply the mobile only style sheet. Actually, I probably should put this code above my style sheet, although it doesn't really seem to have an impact on this case. Now, let's look at what's different about this because the style sheet is not applied to every page or I won't say on every page, it's not applied in every instance. It's applied only when certain criteria is met. Normally in the past where it says media, you'd have media equals print and that would apply for a printout. Here, our media equals handheld or screens that are 
have a maximum device width of 480 pixels or smaller. All right. That's a little confusing. Let's go over it and let's make sure we understand why we have to do this. First of all, not all mobile browsers tell you that they're mobile browsers. All right. Some mobile browsers lie and say that they're just a regular old screen. Why? I don't know. Why do some people lie? All right? They'd rather, you know, do that than tell the truth. All right? I don't know. If a mobile browser identifies itself as a mobile device, it will identify itself as being a handheld device. So devices that play by the rules and identify themselves as handheld devices this style sheet gets applied to because we've said media handheld. Think of a comma as being kind of like an or. All right? Or if it identifies itself as a screen, in other words, it identifies itself as a computer screen, and the maximum device width is 480 pixels or smaller. So if the browser tells you it's a mobile device, or even if it lies, all right, and tells you that it is not a mobile device, but rather it has a maximum device width of 480 pixels or less, then this second style sheet applies. All right? What do you suppose... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Question? Sort of. Hopefully I can word it okay. correctly. I guess I'm just wondering the logic behind the which style sheet is chosen, you're saying it's the last one. I guess what I'm wondering is, would a browser look at this, and if you reverse the two, the mobile and the regular one, in the lines of code, mm -hmm. um, would it look at the, and it was a desktop device, would it look at the first one, which in that case would be the mobile, mm -hmm. and it would say, it doesn't apply, I'm going to move to the first one that applies to, to the situation that, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and let's talk about that. Sorry, did I have a huge can of worms? No, 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 because this is, this is critical to understand. Let's say let's do something let's do a simple example. Alright? Let's work through a simple example. This is, a, this is an excellent point. And it's key to understanding how these media queries work. That's why it is a good question. Let's start out and let's assume that we have two style sheet files. Link href equals a.css. <coughs> Link href equals b.css. And let's say that A says the background's blue and the color's white. So A will make Style sheet A will make a blue page with white font on it. Let's say style sheet B has a style rule that says the background is red. All right. Now, let's say we have both these style sheets on a web page with no media queries at all. So there aren't any media queries in this example. Which style sheet works? Or which style sheet is applied? Actually, they all are. But the last one will take precedence where they have things in common. So what would this page look like if I had these style sheets in this order? Red background, white text. Red background, white text. Why? Because this one made it blue background with white text. 
This one came around and said, I'm going to change the background to red. It doesn't address the color of the text, so that gets applied from the first one. This is sort of, if you will, sort of the cascading one. You know, this one applies, then this one applies, then this one applies, then this one applies. Now, if we reverse these, what would we get? If we were to reverse these, what would our page look like? It would be a blue page with white. Because the blue, or, or this would set the background red. This one would come around and overrule the red background and make it a blue background, and it would set the color white. All right? Go ahead. So essentially, all style sheets apply unless there are if thens or. Exactly. Okay. All the style sheets apply. And really, the only problem comes in when you have style rules that like overlap, that, that um, the, you know, two style rules for the same element. Like in this case, we have the, the color of the page um, uh, and the background of the page. All right? In that case, the latter one applies. Now, when you throw media queries in, it's the same thing, right? Except... If I have a media query here that makes it work for mobile only, then everyone will get style sheet B. Mobile people will get style sheet B and style sheet A. And if style sheet A overrules anything in B, then it will be overruled. But if style sheet A isn't applied, like to a desktop, then it will only get style sheet B. All right? So you put the media query on the browser um, differentiates and says that one on the bottom, it doesn't apply to this situation. Doesn't apply to the situation. Exactly. Okay. Now, in this case, we're using graceful degradation. What does that mean? That means our main style sheet is styling for the fullest version of it, and our sort of incremental style sheet, the one that we're conditionally applying, we're going to apply to the mobile devices to take away stuff. All right? So if we look at that style sheet, we're going to see in there that it takes away stuff. All right? I don't know if I'm hot or cold. I was hot at the beginning of class. Now I'm freezing. freezing. Yeah, I don't know if they like, if we didn't pay the heating bill or something and the heating just went out, but I'm, I'm about ready to start shivering here. 206 is very warm. Two O's. That's very comfortable across the across the hall. Yeah, I don't know how this works. Yeah, that's true. Not that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. This style sheet will apply to both desktop and mobile. This style sheet will not apply to desktop, but will apply to mobile. And let's see what's actually in that style sheet. Actually, not much, <laughs> right? But what do I do? I say part one, make that image not display at all. A display of none. That means it's, it's invisible, all right, if you will. So that's how I went and changed that. Now, I could add more things, too. I could, for example, to, to differentiate further, I'm actually mildly disappointed that that's all that it did. I thought it did more than that. Uh, I could put in that anything with a class of part has a background of red. To further differentiate between the two. I 
right there's the desktop and this guy the mobile takes precedence so it takes precedence in not displaying it and it takes precedence um, for the background color yes uh, never mind Now, let's go let's go into our main style sheet again and let's put in This will be sim uh, um, similar to the example we talked about on the board. So I put a color white in for the text. All right. On the desktop version, lovely, isn't it? Uh, yellow background, white text. On the mobile version, red text. Oh, I'm sorry, red background, white text. So that white applied, and the red applied because it took precedence um, because that style sheet was applied to a mobile. Maybe we'll make that blue. <coughs> now, what are some other things that we could do with this? All right. One thing we could do is if it defines as being mobile, we could overrule the nav and make the width of it 100%. We could say all the sections have a width of 100%. get rid of the borders on them. two parts in there. Okay, won't do that. And so on. All right. Um, how would we make the navigation oriented horizontally for the mobile? In other words, we have this HTML. Here's our navigation. How could we make the navigation be oriented horizontally for the mobile and vertically for the desktop? Would it, do you want to go with display in line? Okay. So where would I put that? Um, your CSS. 
But which one? The response to oh, you know, your, your base assessment in line is on the mobile. Right. So I would put it in which style sheet? Um, the mobile. The mobile. mobile style sheet. All right. And what would the style will be in that? Well, we should be able to know the selector, right? We should be able to get part of this, even if we have to look up something else. Let's just display colon and line. But what's the selector? Who gets who gets the display? Nav. 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 Unordered list. Nav unordered list. So we could do. Nav UL. Display. Actually, that'd be nav li. Yeah. I think. We'll see. And there we go. Uh, it doesn't look really good, but we could go in and we could add some padding. And we could play around it. All right. It still doesn't look too great, but you get the idea. Yeah. The bigger question is um, um, to do that. So if you think about it, with this approach, we can style the page however we want to. We could put a background image on the full version and then get rid of it on the desktop version if we wanted to have some sort of, in the full version, a background image here, all right, behind there or a pattern or a background color. We could define that in the responsive and then get rid of it in the mobile. All right. So how would I do that? Let's go and grab a tile real quick. A background tile generator. that has absolutely no patterns that I would want to use. We'll go with this one. That's as good as, that's as, good as that. Um, let's go and download it. So it downloaded it there. How can I put this only on the desktop version and not in the mobile version? What would I do? Have to put it in the responsive and take it out in the mobile. So, in the responsive, I could say body.
is a darn good question. What do I put in there? Okay. I was just putting you are just put the color in. Well, hmm. let's, let's try that. White. Let's try that. I'm not sure if that will work. So we can do that. The point is, again, keep in mind, I'm showing you sort of the concepts and the techniques. Where you go with it, that's your skill as a designer. You know what makes for a good page on a desktop. You know what makes for a good page on a mobile. All right? If not, you should, you should you know, read up on it and, and review those concepts. The question now is, is how do we make it look good both on a desktop and a mobile? And the first approach that we've shown is a notion of graceful degradation, where we put the whole shoot and match out there in one CSS file, and then we chip away with it um, in the second CSS file. And we use media queries to apply um, to remove things from that. Yes? Question? Ben? Okay. Yeah, this is like an auction. You gotta be careful. If you move a little bit, I think you're asking a question. You, you gotta especially be careful when I'm asking a question, because when I'm asking a question, if, if you know, typically people like become very interested in their notebooks and 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 all that. So if I if I see the slightest movement, I assume you want to answer my question. So, all right. On to the second one. And again, they, they, these these are both. How do I want to say? Um, these are both approaches that you can take, and depending on the circumstances and your starting point, you take one approach or, or the other. You know, this one nice thing in my mind about web design is it's very practical. It's not like there are rules that you must do it this way. You know, there are a few, but to a large degree, the the things that you do are the things that work and the things that are effective. All right. So a second strategy you can take is a strategy of progressive enhancement. And that is where you start out with the barest bones of a web page, and then you enhance it based on media queries, all right, to add some features for the desktop. Now let's look at that example here. Here's a version on a desktop. And is this amazing? I did this like last term, and that background same looks background. almost the same background. I gotta look at that. Is that the same background? It's no. Close to it. it's close I, I thought to it. the same thing. All right. Yeah, it's a slightly different. All right. Okay. So that's the desktop version of it. Here is a mobile version of it. Oh, wrong one. Here is a mobile version of it. So we have real similar results, right? I mean, other than a tiny tweak here and there, it's pretty much the same results. But we're taking a different approach to get there. And in this one, we're taking the approach of progressive enhancement, where we are going to start with a bare bones approach and then add stuff in. The textbook makes a good argument for progressive enhancement, and I think this is most relevant if you're like starting a project from scratch, all right? Um, in that, by starting and thinking of what you want in the mobile first, that discourages you from adding unnecessary frill, frills in. All right, that discourages you from that sort of mentality. That you're going to start with the most bare bones, and then 